up everybody salute and welcome to Leo Does Street my journey of discovering what street photography is all about it's one thing to study about it and a whole nother thing to actually do it today I'm on the streets of Mosley and I really want to figure out what I can get the sky is overcast which is terrible for portrait photography overcast skies are awesome because you get a lovely soft light and that's very flattering and forgiving over wrinkles and all that sort of thing it's a real nightmare when it comes to street photography. Too much motion and there's not enough light to freeze the motion and so it's really blurry or really grainy, really mushy and I really hate the look of that so we need to figure this thing out. Hello. These phones are supposed to be decent in low light and low light to me means it's evening time, it's getting dark. The sun is no longer in the sky. At this time of day, the sun is so in the sky, it's just a bit of cloud cover, so I don't understand why the phone would struggle. I know that in sunny conditions, it would be awesome. But I don't expect my phone to struggle, take all my pictures with my mobile phone, just because I believe in limitations. But this low light thing, this overcasty thing, is starting to become a limitation that is irritating the heck out of me. Ah! I'm not sure. The low light isn't being so crazy. Is it all in my mind? I don't know. Whilst I've been out walking on these streets, I've seen a homeless guy. He sells a magazine called The Big Issue. Here in the UK, that's a magazine that people who are sleeping rough and on the streets sell this magazine and maybe try to raise a little bit of money. Chatting to him was really interesting because as street photographers, one of the things I don't like to personally is take advantage of people's hard luck. So I got to chatting to this guy and it turns out he's actually internet famous to some degree. And I'm gonna go back and have a chat with him and just find out firsthand what people on the streets think about street photographers and others who just love to take photographs of them. I kind of think it's like a low hanging fruit, kind of wrong thing to do. What can they do, right? They're just on the street. So it'd be lovely to hear from him. So I'm on the street with uh, this gentleman here. It's called Fun Guy. I'm doing all right, thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're an internet star. A little bit. Yeah, so online, they call you the street star. How do you feel about photographers, street photographers, journalists taking photos of you? Is it right to take photos mind. of people that live on the streets? Mind. You don't mind it? Mind. Go mind. for it. Tell the people. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Listen, keeps me out there. Keeps me fucking out there. Excuse right. my French. Excuse my French. How about everyone else that you know? Like, would they mind? As long as you don't take a photo of me, don't show them those. Don't show them. Right. Right. <laughs> okay, so, so Fun Guy is telling me not to show some of the, his mates because they do mind. Because they, they don't like that sort of thing. I'm a private person. Private person, yeah, we all want to have our lives, right? We want to do our thing. So, in the case of those who are celebrities, <coughs> they love it. <laughs> There's a line, let people live their lives. That's how that's I correct. feel. Correct, that's correct, you know. Let yeah. them live their life, you know. Yeah. Let them live their life. Interesting to run into someone who's homeless and lives on the street and get their perspective. I just love photos of really interesting people. Anyone that I got in these photos has been someone that I thought was pretty interesting for whatever reason. I try not to treat people badly with my images. It's just about documenting what's happening on the street. Years from now, we're gonna look back on this and it'll be pretty awesome and surprising and amazing. At least that's what I hope. Yeah, that's my whole shtick, is who's interesting. I'm interested in people. So that's the end of it for me today. I've run out of time. I think that the phone that I have works best in sunny conditions, but it could just be the fact that I have a model that's not up to scratch. We're gonna see, I haven't seen the photos yet, but these phones are getting better and better. People are getting work published that they've taken on their phone. Every single month, these phones are getting better. Imagine where we're gonna be in two years. There's two years 
you're not even going to be able to talk to me about not shooting on a smartphone. So that was my experience of doing street photography in Mosley. I had an hour and 30 minutes to kill and I just went into Mosley and went for it. So I wasn't expecting anything too incredible images wise, but I'm pretty pleased with how things turned out. Overall, it was good, not great because I lost about 30% of the images just due to mushiness and artifacting and just awfulness. The camera that I have definitely struggles even in overcast situations. So forget low light, this is just overcast. I think because there's a lot of motion involved, the camera was struggling to read what was happening and still give me a clear image. Now it could just be something directly related to this individual handset, or it could be an iPhone 6S Plus thing, which is this phone. Maybe I just need to upgrade my phone. The overall picture is that mobile phones, smartphones are getting better so fast. It's unbelievable. You've only got to look at the DxO ratings to see how quickly a phone that might have been ranked number one in March or in January, by March it's fallen down to eighth place or something like that. That's how quickly this technology is moving forward. I think you really got to watch this space. Phones are going to be such a big player in the future in photography. That's just my take on it. They are already great now. It's only going to get better. So let me show you what happened with these photos that I was taking when I went out there. This is a photo that I took in Mosley. So just look at this gentleman. Now, the sky, as you can see, is overcast. Everything's quite clear in the back here. You can see it's bright. It's not dark. There's light coming through the clouds in certain areas. Obviously, it's a bit more shaded where this gentleman is walking, not because of buildings, but just because it's this cloud up above. If I zoom in to the base, you see that it's not very sharp at all. You can make things up. You could arguably say, well, it's a smartphone. I would say if the sun was bright, it would be way sharper than that. But to really emphasize the difficulty that I was facing here, on the right hand side of this man is some ghosting, some really ugly, unsightly stuff. Look at this. What on earth is this? That looks awful. Just look at that. It's like a cutout or something. And then look at this tree, these branches, this awful, awful fringing. Something I have never seen before. And then at the top, of this photo it's just terrible look at that that's obviously some algorithm going wrong this isn't just bad lighting and you know ISO and all that sort of thing and exposure speeds and that this is definitely something to do with an algorithm that's struggling to cope in overcast conditions look at these branches they're just faded away like they don't exist and then you've got that awful blue yuckiness over there again some more ghosting around the side of this tree and this is something that i noticed when i was shooting in worcester and other places that the pictures just weren't as sharp they were more grainy look how mushy the man's face looks no definition there whatsoever so this combination of people moving and overcast skies is not working Thanks for watching Leo Does Street. I am Visual Magpie across all social media. Like, subscribe, leave me a comment down below. I would love that. Until next time, salute.